I've been studying the effects of making music on brain development and how children reason. And um, I'd like to tell you about one particular study. Um, and bear with me, because there were many groups in this study. Um, what we did is we went into Head Start, and there were 13 Head Start sites in northeastern Wisconsin. And we randomly assigned the children to different groups. So we had one group of children that received instruction in singing, one group of children that received instruction in the keyboard, a group of children that received rhythm instruction through jazz, and various control groups. And um, we pre-tested these children on a very large domain of spatial abilities, academic abilities, um, social skills, and then we post-tested them after two years of instruction. And specifically, what we found was that the children that received the singing, the rhythm, and the keyboard instruction scored higher than the children that received instruction in something else, non-musical. Um, they scored higher um, than children that received no instruction, um, specifically on tasks that require mental imagery. More interesting than that, um, when we looked at the rhythm group, the jazz group specifically, we found that they scored at the same level as the piano and the singing groups on that skill, but they scored about 40% higher on skills specifically relating to ordering things. Um, and this generalized to mathematical ability, which was a remarkable finding. Um, so the children in the rhythm group scored higher than all other groups on arithmetic tasks. Um, we also compared all their scores to children that were in Head Start that didn't have music instruction, to disadvantaged children that weren't in Head Start, and also to middle income children, because disadvantaged children typically score much lower on ability tests to begin with than middle income children do. And one of the most, one of the glaring deficiencies that they face has to do with spatial abilities, which was the specific domain that we were targeting. Um, but what we found was that the singing and the keyboard groups scored at the same level after instruction as the middle income children, and the children that received the, dra the jazz rhythm instruction scored significantly higher in arithmetic um, than even the middle income children did. So what this tells us is that there is a direct effect from making music on cognitive development. Um, there are also, just one more minute, there are also a number of studies that have looked specifically at musicians' brains compared to non-musicians' brains. And they find that there are specific... <laughs> Wenton can't wait. <laughs> musicians' brains are very special. <laughs> And he's better at math. <laughs> There's a membrane that actually divides the two sides of the brain. If it weren't for this corpus callosum, we would actually have two brains instead of one. And it's responsible for transferring information from one side of the brain to the other. And that particular organ, that membrane, is much larger and more fibrous in musicians than in non-musicians. <laughs> and that's possibly because of the exercise that musicians get especially at an early age. All of these effects on the brain are most strong when the music making begins before age six or seven. And I could go into a number of other studies that show that the, the motor cortex is larger in musicians. Musicians are much better at discriminating pitch and rhythm um, because of different functions that occur in their brains. Um, this research has really blossomed in the last decade because we now have you know, magnetic resonance imaging techniques that we can look at the living brain. Um, but the bottom line is that there seems to be a relationship here um, between early instruction in music and brain development, and specifically between early instruction in jazz and rhythm and arithmetic.